Remember first episode I came out here, I was like cinched. I had my tuck, I had tights, I had shoes for no reason. I'm wearing jeans, I've got socks, my dick is out, I'm comfy. Welcome to the Victory Lap. Where we review the latest episode of season 8 of... Wait, do my teeth look yellow? No. I'm here again. Welcome back. Thanks. It's nice for you to join us. Thanks. In this episode, we are going to be discussing the finale of no. season 8 of RuPaul's Drag Race. We were actually there at the live taping. We were. We, I was not in drag. I did not feel like being in downtown LA around midnight when it got out in full drag. I just didn't want that for my life. I am going to say it... it the sparkle's kind of gone. It took away, it tarnished the sparkle a little. Like, it was also very exciting. It was great to see how they took the six hours of, of filming. various filming and compiled it into one 90 minute plus extravaganza. extravaganza. But it was almost like going to McDonald's and finding out what the chicken nuggets are made of. It's just kind of like, I don't know if I really needed to know this. Yeah, so I definitely, I don't think I would do it. I know I wouldn't do it again. Um, it was a great experience. Great though. experience. I will just stick to DragCon from now on, which was amazing. Was amazing. So we're going to talk about all of the queens in order in which they left. Oh, they make that theater, by the way, look so big. Tiny. They did that good fish eye on all those Tiny shots. It is small theater. in that theater. There's nothing And we there. were like this. We were like oh, literally. squish. And then the seats are like this close in front of you. Like you can easily read your neighbor's text messages. Somebody was on Grindr in front of us. So the intro for this whole thing was so no. stunning. I still get little goosey bumps every time I think about it. It was just so fierce. The curtains rose out of nowhere. Yeah. And then there's little. RuPaul standing beautiful and flawless. And then all of the queens, all of the winners in their poses from episode one. It was flawless, but again, it was breathtaking. No announcement. No whatsoever. announcement. It just, I think that's what made it so wonderful though. Is it was like, so it shocking. Just hit us. We were like, wait, the curtain's raising. Holy shit. There are all the queens on RuPaul. Holy fuck. What is happening? I'm, I'm coming right now. So speaking of Fias, I have to give a special shout out to my, my personal angel and queen, Miss Michelle Visage. Who was stunning. It's time for Bianca Del Rio to start showing us some versatility because Visage wore a turtleneck. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Well, Santino still needs to win a sewing contest. That's never going to happen. So now let's talk about each one of the queens yes, as they the queens. left the show. We're going to start off with Dax exclamation point because personally she is my, like my least favorite of Layla and Dax going home. I'm really over the whole storm thing. I think I mentioned it in one of my very early reviews of the season that Dax claims to be the queen of all nerds, yet Dax only does storm ever. I don't see Dax doing anything. I mean, granted, I don't really follow her on Instagram anymore. I stopped following her. 90% of what I see of Dax it's is all storm. It's white wigs. You know, it's like. Fifi O'Hara, say what you will about the bitch, but her 365 days of drag, she has done so many different genres of nerd that, like, that's how you do nerd. Doing Storm again and again and again, that's not nerd to me. That's one niche comic book character. And if you want to be like, I'm the queen of Storm from the X-Men, you can be like, sure, that's your thing. You do that. But, like, don't be like, I'm the queen of all nerds. I would have liked for her to have, like, gone out of the box. And done something completely crazy. And done crazy. something totally different or something super nerdy. My biggest problem when it comes down to it and why I'm not sad that she was the first to go is really just Dax's attitude. It's not pleasant. She comes across as so... Like a snootier version of Max. Snooty and condescending and... And I think what really hurt her... Sorry to cut you off. I think what really hurt her is that the very first thing we knew about her was that she was Violet's drag mother. And Violet is fierce. It's disappointing. And I think that's what really hurt her. Yeah. So... I'm glad that she's finding some success mm -hmm. post show because we didn't really get to see a lot of her. I don't believe she had much more to give because mm -hmm. all she had ever does is storm. So let's move on to somebody who's a little more fun. Layla McQueen serving purple tucked fantasy. She that looked hair. beautiful. That wig that was great. Wig. That, that hat. makeup. <laughs> that hat. Huh. I think she definitely looks a lot more polished. She stepped up her pussy. 
I do think it's kind of funny that she showed up in like a teddy for the finale. Like it was really cute. Like it had like blue doll heads on the titties. And That's her thing. A giant eyeball. It was just funny. Like everybody else is in these gowns. And then Layla couldn't even find a pair of pants to she slip was on. She, she was so real cute. She was real cute though. Um, they cut down. They cut down a lot of that. Almost ever. Well, Layla didn't even say much at the live taping, but what no. she said got cut down to almost nothing. Well, and here's a little bit of backstage tea for you. Um, Rue kept calling her Lila, and it, it was maybe about three minutes of filming that they kept going on back and forth with him calling her Lila. And uh, they had to cut all that out because Rue obviously can't go on TV calling Layla, Lila. And there was a really fierce moment in there which I was so sad they cut out because Rue goes, Now, Lila and Dax, I've only ever had to do one double elimination before and that one double elimination really hurt me that one time. And I just thought that moment was so funny, and I was so sad that it didn't get kept. I understand, because Rue can't go on live television being like, Lila McQueen, it's not Lila. I also think it was a little bit, like, a little too shady. It was hilarious. Stop it, it Santino. Was... Next we have Cynthia Lee Fontaine in red, and it didn't really translate very well on TV. But from where we were sitting, and you could still see it on TV, where we were sitting, if you look down on it, it made this heart shape, which I thought was really cute. Her little cuckoo Even cut out. Her little cutout of, of her cuckoo had a heart shape too. And it was just, it was adorable, I liked it. And she it won really Miss cute. Congeniality. She did, spoiler alert. If you don't want to know who won, then you should not be watching a Drag Race recap. Cynthia is the earliest queen eliminated to ever win Congeniality. The closest I think that anybody's ever gotten is Ivy Winters. Who went home Baby. in seventh place, I think. She has gone through it though, and I really think she deserved it. She did. It was between her and Thorgy for me, and knowing what Cynthia has gone through and knowing how positive she's been, I, I'm glad that she won it. Me too. Next, we have Nasha Lopez, who has given me like full Demi Lovato, Raven Simone fish. She always is just serving it, serving fish to me. It was cute. Next, we have Acid Betty, who stole Sasha Bell's dress. <laughs> From her it's first Sa runway, Sasha lobster, Bell's lobster dress. Which Chad Michaels also wore like the same kind of thing, and Chad looked awful in that final runway. Something which was, we'll get to that. Something but was off. Acid looked amazing as normal. I loved her she paint. Did. Acid actually did get a question from the audience, mm -hmm. and it was actually a question from our very own Tracy Martel. Yes. And the question was, Acid Betty. Tracy Martell from California wants to know, did you or did you not come for me on the live TV? <laughs> and they had this great like, it was great up moment, and they cut, cut it, it along with everything else Trixie said during the. Trixie was finale. not in the finale at all, even though she had so much of a part in it throughout the entire film. She did. She so asked shady. a question. Did she ask two questions? She asked one question she and she question. was really involved with Kim. And then she was part of Kim's. Who's here to support she you? She got today? an entire intro opening up the show. She's fine. She has a show called uh, uh, with Katya. So like, she's good. She's making her coin. Next we have Robbie Turnter. Robbie Turnter. In a kind of like yellowish version of that original green dress that she wore in the promo trailer, which I... It was just, but it was like the head fuller, knot. it had... It was beautiful. It was sheer, but it had lace, but it had tulle. She had that giant red wig, oh and gosh. she was in really good spirits. She was, she was very peppy. She was very funny. Again, they cut a lot of what she said that was really funny, but thankfully they kept quite a bit, and it was... The focus is really on the top three it nowadays. Really was. So, I mean, I understand, but I, the other queens were there. Next, we have the unfortunate victim of a villain edit, the oft maligned, the almost there, Thorgy Thor. Can we talk about that wig? That Woo! wig was insane. I have a lot of questions about that whole outfit. I want to know. I just need to know the backstory behind it. Thorgy doesn't wear stuff like that, so I was so confused by it. It looked like something Acid should be wearing. It was but I love fascinating. It. I think that Thorgy and Layla got together and were like, let's not wear pants. Let's just wear some tights. And let's prayer. do something different. Let's wear a tuck and a prayer and see what happens. But she looked great. She looked great. Green. She looked like she was having a lot of fun in that full bodysuit fantasy with her 
crazy Betty Spaghetti wig. Maybe that's what she was doing. Maybe she was Maybe giving you Betty full spaghetti. Betty Spaghetti. I don't Maybe. even know. This was one of the greatest moments that I don't got know, cut. Got cut, and I don't know why. One of the lovely dancers comes out with oh. a violin for Thorgy, and she takes it and she puts it here, and all of a sudden she reaches into her Betty Spaghetti wig and just pulls out a mic for it and plugs it in. <laughs> And Robbie, who cannot keep the illusion of television alive, just turns and goes, Did you just pull that out of your wig? <laughs> and everybody, everybody died. lost it. It was And they cut that part. Hilarious. But they cut it, probably to keep the magic of television alive. It was so lovely though. It was fantastic. And I would love to just watch Thorgy play the violin. Oh my gosh, I would totally go watch the Thorchestra. I would go to the I would pay money for the Thorchestra. Especially if lie. Rufus Rain Wainwright rolls out on the piano. Next we have Miss Brittany Berry. I'm was sorry, Derek Spears. Ah, um, she looked gorgeous. She the wig was lower. I think she blocked her brows She too. blocked the brows. And she like refilled them in. As she said, I can't even remember if this actually made the cut. She said, I'm actually doing drag now. Yes. She said that, I don't know if it's actually in the episode. I kind of, I honestly, I zoned out while she was talking. I'm not even gonna lie. I, okay, the thing that I I love her, I love her, I'm sorry, but I, it was late. The thing that I've said from the very beginning is I really wanted to love Derek. I really wanted to love her. And I think her self-editing and the way that she conducted herself, it just really wasn't that Derek Barry that I wanted. And it wasn't until the political challenge that I was like, this is the Derek Barry that I wanted. And I feel like she's gotten there now, but it's just like, it's taken so long for that to manifest into who yeah. I know that she can be. It was the fun Derek that I really enjoyed uh, in the uh, Meet the Queens. That's who we got at the finale. And she was darling. She looked very pretty. I think she could have gone bigger, but it was very cute. It was cute. It was cute. Finally, we have Miss Chi Chi Devane. Miss Chi Chi Who looked Devane, so good in black. Girl. She had contacts in, which I didn't notice until it got to the taping. She had like these beautiful red contacts and it made her look eerie and beautiful. Eerie and gothic. Um, My favorite thing about Chi Chi's look for the finale was that it was like she took her walking in the workroom outfit and then stepped it up and instead yes. of trash bags and a five dollar wig it was a nice lace front with the contacts and I don't know what it was made out of. Pleather? Leather? Vinyl? It was it, vegan probably. <laughs> it was vegan. Or I don't turkey know. neck. <laughs> Her turkey neck dress, but it was gorgeous and she looks sexy. But for some reason, they put Rue and Chi Chi's seats so far they were apart. Really far apart. On the stage. I don't know if they just wanted to get a nice pulled back shot of Chi Chi to get the dress, but I was just like, why is she so far away? But yeah, she got a nice solo moment and. They talked about her mom. She was up in the audience, she but was. they couldn't get a camera on her quick enough, so that got cut. It did. The can it was shaky, and there were like a bunch of rude ass people just kept getting up and walking away it around was so the mom. Rude. Throughout the whole film, these like... people kept getting up and down. There was this guy in this red suit that like kept getting up and down. The people behind us smelled like diapers, and they kept like jumping across the sh the chairs and like switching seats. And it was just like, can y'all just not? The theater. Like, how hard the is it to just sit? What's happened to the theater? No respect. No respect. No respect. <laughs> Rob Perum shenanigans. A lot of people are of the opinion, justice for Chi Chi, that Chi Chi should have won Miss Congeniality. And. Chi Chi didn't have liver cancer. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't say Stop that. it. Alright, so now it's time to talk about the top three. three. We'll talk about Naomi first, who came out in this sickening full Padme Amidala on Naboo at a picnic lunch with Anakin. Of her three looks that she had that evening, that one did look a little costumey. It did, but it was my favorite. But of it was them. really because it's something so different that I. It see was very and that hair. It was cute. Her lip sync that she did was so fucking fierce. I think that of these three lip syncs that they did this year, they were so much better than last year's. Like Lucian really like when he wrote these three original songs for each of the girls. He really tailored it to each girl. What forever 21 mannequins <laughs> are legless. hobbling around legless right Well, and they're armless too because Bob stole all the arms for his first music video. 
Naomi did fantastic. Her lip sync was great. Smashed. It was beautiful. The boys were beautiful. The boys were beautiful. It was so fun and it was so... Her. Her. It was quintessential Naomi Smalls and it was great. Her outfit there was beautiful. It was basically what she wore the entire season. She was giving me slutty 1920s film star. I enjoyed her final outfit, that powder blue number with the fake fox on the side. I thought it was just very classy. We'll talk about Miss First Runner Up, Kim Chi next. We don't know for sure if she's the first runner up, but she's the first runner up in our hearts. I think that on a point scale, Kim Chi would be first runner up because she yeah. won more challenges. Um, her first outfit was this big hulking blue thing, which at first looked like it was just this big silhouetted dress, but then I realized watching it on TV that it actually had separate legs and she almost looked like Violet Beauregard turning into a blueberry, being rolled away. It was beautiful. You know, I loved it though because I didn't think it was hulking because I sound like Ross. And you know what? I really liked it though because I don't think it was hulking. I think... Stop it! <laughs> Stop! I think she was giving us... Um, it was, I actually liked it because it was all layers of, it was, of fluff. It was you know, it was all frothy and it was lace I'm and frothy. tulle. I'm well, frothy, thinking about it. And it was just, she kind of just bounced and it really, it helped, it was one of those garments that helped her walk look even cuter because of yeah. how it was structured. So flexible. That was the very smart thing that Kim Chi did. She definitely looked like she's improved her walk since the show, mm -hmm. but the outfits she chose and the way she walked in them specifically made the walks work for her because in that one she kind of took very short kind of like hoppy steps and because it was all these tiered layers of fabric it just bounced in the cutest way and she was giving me like ice princess. I really enjoyed her lip sync outfit. It really fit in with the whole no fats, no femmes, no Asians thing and I thought that was so clever that that was the hook. Fat femination. Fat it was great. And it was it was K-pop, it was kimchi. It was, the she dance. had the whole second line in Korean. Which you can hear if you watch the video, if you <laughs> play it back. If you watch the finale, you can hear where she starts the Korean verse. She gets about a line into it and then the audience just starts screaming. And that's because for all of us who were actually in the audience, the bounce back was so like, echoey in the actual theater. We couldn't quite make out the words 90% of the mm -hmm. time. Um, like I, did, I think it took us like halfway through Naomi's to realize it was saying, I'm legendary, all mm -hmm. legs, no dairy. And that was the only words we got. I didn't know the rest of the words till I was. And I could hear yelling Naomi Smalls. Naomi Smalls! But for Kim Cheese, I had no idea what I was being said. I thought the whole said. thing was in Korean, to be completely honest. I had, because I couldn't hear yeah, it. Yeah, I had no idea what was being said, but the reason you hear the audience freak out about halfway through that Korean line is because we all realized it was in Korean. And then we were just like, yeah! And again, that runway outfit, the way it was structured, she walked and it just looked like she was gliding. Her question that she had for the <gasps> crew was so fucking funny and I was so happy they kept that one. Oh I can't God. even remember her other questions, but I loved. Oh my God, her question died. from Jason and Bryce and her answer, her demure little, well, Rue's reaction, I... That was my favorite 100% thing. act like she was not ready for it. You could tell, like, you could tell, like, some moments that were perhaps a little Can't. rehearsed. Perhaps, you know, a writer in the back was like, don't forget to do that. That was 100% unexpected. Her final look was this <gasps> Beautiful origami, origami paper, paper cranes. cranes. It was just, it was everything to me. Floating lanterns. So beyond. It, it was, was LaShawn Beyond. It was. And now. And now, the, the queen, queen of the hour. The queen of the hour. Miss Bob the Drag Queen. Which, okay, let me just say, first and foremost, of course Bob won. Of course. It was like so obvious that it was going to happen and I'm not salty about it at all. I, I was really voting for either Kim or Bob and like it was just like filming the whole thing it was like well of course Bob is going to win like there's no contest that Bob is going to win. It has to be Bob. It has, it has to, to be, be Bob. Bob. It's like Bianca. It's like Violet. It was like there's nobody else. And like Raja. It was like Raja you know it was just like there's no one else that's going to take this. It's 
impossible. I think from the very first episode, it was very clear. And I think I mentioned that in one of our early reviews, that, like, Bob is clearly winning this show. There yeah. is no constant. I think you mentioned it too in the first photo shoot when Bob just yeah. sat there and didn't smile and made that great comedy face. It was like Bob's winning. Bob is winning. And she just she did so well. And I think what it really was was that she could do it all. She could literally do everything. And on top of that, she's an advocate for the community, which is something that. None of the queens have really been before. We haven't gotten from a reigning queen before. And I think, I, I'm not ha I'm so happy for yes. Bob. I'm so happy for Roberta Elaine, the drag queen, and I wish her all the best. Let's talk about Bob's looks. First she had, for the opening runway, that Viola Davis goes to the Met Ball. It was very unexpected for Bob. It was not something I would have expected to see on Bob. No. It was something I would um, more expect to see on maybe like Raja, actually. Mm -hmm. Raja, or even maybe like Delta Work, or a queen like that, just the understated white gown with the cape and the sleeves, and then just the fun pop of pattern. And of course, she came out purse first. It was great. She gave Rue a purse. She gave Rue a purse. Fantastic. Um, I can't really remember her outfit for her lip sync because all I was focusing on were those gorgeous boys in the Bob the Builder outfits. Which I thought was so fucking funny because Bob has constantly played off of Bob the Builder. But let's talk I about died. that lip sync because they were all three wonderful. Like, oh sweet baby Jesus, that was one of the best original the death lip syncs drop. I have ever seen. From Bless. start to finish, coming down the runway, put the spotlight on me, having the, having, I think it was Mrs. Kasha Davis and... I, I can't even remember who else was with them. That jumped the backup back. singers. It was great. I don't like to show off. It was so and it was fierce. so funny because you know they they ragged on Bob for for show showing boat. off and being a showboat and just this whole and you know I'm Bob the drag queen. I'm gorgeous. I'm hilarious. Humble. And, humble. and it was just so fantastic. And who knew Bob could dance like that? I knew Bob could dance like that. I to me it was such a surprise because I mean like she's danced but it's been in the group numbers you know. And it's been, you know, in lip sync situations where it's like lip sync for your life. And Bob's sure Vogue number is stellar. Fun. It was all. All of it was just very fierce. It was just a fantastic and it number. Was, like, I think personally, Kim's was catchier just because it was like, there was something about the beat, but Bob's was more original. Bob's, I mean, Bob is the winner, so she got the winnings. <laughs> so, kind of like. Last season, Violet got the fiercest number. <laughs> and then Ginger got the next and best number. And, not enough time. and so for the final three, look, uh, Bob had, I think to me it was quintessential Bob. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the kind of like wig that's kind of like, ooh, she got caught in a turbine engine and was blowing that way. And it was like this deconstructed party dress that she could literally like lift up a piece like it was a shelf. And she had a little purse inside of it and there was like a snatched out of it. Yeah, she like she lift it, purse out. lifted it up like it was the top of a <gasps> oh, hat box. Oh, 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 When Bob gave Rue the purse, they did a cut and Rue went backstage probably to get her makeup touched up. And Rue walked out, totally purse, purse first. First. All the way out off the stage. Did not let go of the pose until she was completely backstage and we couldn't see her anymore. And Bob was sitting in the chair screaming. They're actually literally screaming. They were trying to get Bob backstage to get ready for the next bit. And Bob was just like, but <laughs> it was so funny. So and I cute. wish they had gotten to keep just that moment. They couldn't have for continuity, but it was everything. It was. Let's give out a few special award shout outs. First of all, first shout out goes to Raja who came out in her fabulous kimono into a Madonna look because true she was Madonna so look. offended by the Madonna runway and I thought it was great. They actually had a little bit very early on where Michelle did a little video about all the Madonna looks and that got cut which I was a little upset about but I understand because the intro to it was Rue saying, now when five queens came out in a kimono, blah 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 blah, let's watch. And then Michelle did her whole thing, but there were only four queens that came out in a kimono, so I think that's why I got cut. My shout out goes to Jinxie. She looks so good. Who was, I don't know who helped Jinx <clears throat> into that dress. Shade. <laughs> 
That <laughs> I was don't know. shady. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I know that she has a costume designer. I think I follow him on Instagram and I can't remember their name. Who does a lot of her big dresses for her. And is amazing. I don't even remember if it's a he or she. But I follow them. This dress was gorgeous. It was this golden rhinestone sequin thing. I was really unimpressed with Sharon's look. I was really unimpressed with Tyra because she's worn that same wig like 500 times. And I'm pretty sure she literally had just worn that green jumpsuit to drag on the weekend before. Yeah. I can't remember what BB was wearing, but Bibi I mean her was makeup was good. Pretty much what she always wears. A jumpsuit and jump some other stuff. A jumpsuit with a cape and a train and a feather. And the, the rest of them were just very unmemorable, but Violet. <gasps> Jacob missed it because he was gone. But the whole thing, the, the little backdrop lifted and I just screamed as soon as it did. And I was so mad that they had put music over it because literally the entire audience for a hot minute were chanting come through when she came out. It was so fierce and like somebody when she came out someone was like, Violet I love you! And she's like, I love you too. It was great. All that got cut but she was so fucking amazing. Let's talk about the fantasy. That weird tribute to John Waters with the roaches. It was, okay, she was like a corpse. She was a mummified drag queen. She was a mummified drag queen because she had like the veins and like the crown had like become Fused. part of her head. She didn't have any hair, this beat mug and just like corpse zombie veins all down cockroaches crawling up her bosoms and the side of her head. It was so disgusting that it was perfect. And then this gown. There are pictures all over Tumblr of close-ups of the details of this gown. You need to go. You need to look. Masturbate this to them. look was drag history. This was iconic drag. It was just this giant deep green dress with beading and rhinestones, jewels, I'm sitting there. I was not prepared. They both told me like, "Bitch, you're gonna gag." Violet's dress. I was like, "Okay, sure." It's probably Violet won all over again with that dress. She she should have just taken the crown and the scepter and been like, "I'm keeping this," and just been like, "I'm keeping this," because y'all can't top this. Like even Kimchi's origami dress, pale. It did not even touch that. This dress. was like, we know where the hundred thousand dollars went. Oh my god, I I think I stood up. I was so, I'm just cleaning out here because it was, so, I'm cleaning out of this queen. It was so good. Rue herself has not worn a dress. That decadent. Do you remember after the Hello Kitty lip sync when Violet was screaming in the back come through and was just like, yes! That was clutching the whole her little cage. audience screaming, clutching the chairs. It was, because here's the thing. She knew when Bianca came out in full head to toe, Silver. Yeah. She knew. She said. She said to herself right then and there. She said, "Next year, I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna make them forget all these bitches." She stole the crown. We needed to recrown. She her. stole another crown. She stole Sharon's crown, and now she stole Bob's crown. She stole Bob's crown. She she stole and she all the crowns. She went into herself. <laughs> that was Sharon's crown. It was Sharon. It was the curse of Sharon Needles. It killed Violet, but she came back. She I has a glamazon eating bitch she ready for the runway. I have never been so floored. I have never used the word gagged so seriously as when I saw that outfit. Choked. Totally 100% gagged. S&M gagging. Rihanna was on hand. Gosh. She had the whip. Yes, 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 yeah. It was so good. I mean... Just skip forward five minutes because I could just go on about this forever. Well, that is it. We've done it. We recapped the entire season. But you know what? We're not done yet because guess what was announced during the finale? All, All Stars. All Stars Redemption. Too. Fuck my entire life. <laughs> Ugh, I cannot wait. The rumor is right. that there's a lot of season five and queens. We want. There's a lot of rumors. We'll see what happens in a couple months. We'll see what happens, but you know what? We'll be there recapping it, recapping it, whether you want us to or not. Thank you so much for watching this entire season with us. Once again, I am the Lush Lagoon, Yvonne de Kulo. And I am Madame Zarini, and you will carry me up that Madame Zaroni. Ah, damn it. I'm Jay Gloom. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Say goodbye to her. <laughs>